Hello, today we are dis discussing about abortion and, and we will be interested in uh, understanding how you can be able to define abortion, especially in the context of Uganda, and how we can be able to make the diagnosis of abortion, both looking at the symptoms, how different types of abortion present, and also looking at uh, how you can actually make it, especially the, the the signs that you're able to deduce when you're doing a physical examination, especially a vaginal examination. We'll also look at how you'll be able to deduce different uh, differential diagnoses related to abortion, and also the various um, causes or risk factors associated with uh, loss of a pregnancy. Um, abortion, also in, in described as miscarriage, is the loss of a pregnancy before the age of viability. In Ugandan context, the age of viability is when the baby is less than uh, 28 weeks of gestation. Uh, um, although we have also seen that uh, a number of babies who are born just before the age of viability can actually be able to survive. Like the local statistics that shows that babies born at 25, 26, 27 weeks uh, can actually have a chance of surviving. Uh, uh, this calls for a, a change in the mode of the, I mean, in the model of management of abortions, especially when they are near uh, 28 weeks. So that means that uh, this kind of uh, miscarriage, if they will ever happen, they should be able to happen in a setting where they're able to do a neonatal resuscitation. Um, it's a common condition to account up to 20% of all clinical pregnancies. Uh, um, more than 75% of this occurs before the age of 16 weeks of gestation. Um, and this rate uh, higher as the mother's age is increasing. Uh, that, and also it increases with the history of previous uh, miscarriage. We have um, abortion divided into a number of conditions. It can be spontaneous abortion, which is actually the one we are interested in telling you. When you're talking about abortion, we do not mean um, intentional termination of pregnancy. Intentional termination of pregnancy, uh, it's, it's actually an induced abortion. So when you're talking about abortion, it means that you've lost a pregnancy. In some contexts, people call spontaneous abortion as um, a miscarriage, but uh, all of them, you've actually were able to miscarry the pregnancy. Uh, spontaneous abortion can be isolated. That means that uh, uh, it can occur maybe because of specific problems and may not actually repeat itself. And then it can also be re recurrent uh, pregnancy losses that we will actually briefly look at it at the end of this presentation. Induced abortion, in, on the other hand, can be because of medical termination of pregnancy. Maybe if a mother has a condition uh, that is uh, making, if we continue with the pregnancy, we're going to end up into uh, a problem. We can be able to decide, discuss that on case-by-case -case basis. But there's also others that are called illegal. That means that uh, people do this um, uh, uh, for reasons that are not prescribed or reasons that uh, the law does not allow, especially in the context of Uganda. Um, what causes abortion? It could be because of fetal factors. It could be because of maternal factors. The fetal factors may be because of the genetic issues. So if there is a problem with the gene of the baby, that I mean of the fetus that is being formed, uh, there's a high chance that a mother is able to lose that pregnancy. Uh, the other thing is that uh, up to 50% of uh, babies are lost due to uh, maybe chromosomal abnormalities. So that should also, uh, we should take that into context when we're investigating a, a mother who has actually uh, lost a pregnancy. Uh, numerical defects like trisomy, if you have a trisomy or a polyploidy, that means that you have an extra uh, copies of chromosome being present that may actually result into abortion. Um, 
monosomy, that means that you've lost one copy of a, a particular chromosome of, inter of, of interest. That means that uh, it can also result into that. A structural defects, if there's a defect in the, in the chromosomes, maybe part of it has been lost, you actually likely to have this. Um, multiple pregnancy is also prone to uh, miscarriage. So when a mother has a multiple pregnancy, these are every pregnancy that need to be looked at uh, uh, closely. Uh, the other thing is that when you have the placenta degenerating, the villi degenerating, you're also more likely to have that. Uh, um, maternal uh, factors that are related to abortion could be because of endocrine problem or could be because of anatomical abnormalities. Uh, the uh, endocrine problem account to up to 15% of uh, cases. Even the anatomical abnormality account for up to 15% of the cases of pregnancy losses. Uh, the, 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 the endocrine problem could be because of diabetes. When some a mother has diabetes, they are more likely to lose a pregnancy. So that means that uh, a mother who has diabetes and attempt to con conceive, you may need to actually have a closer look at them. Thyroid um, abnormalities. Even in the, in the face that you have luteal phase defects, you're more likely to have this. We'll have a discussion about luteal phase de defects uh, in, another, in another lecture. Um, um, the other anatomical things that might predispose a woman to getting a, pre a pregnancy loss could be because of cervical uh, factors or uh, uterine factors. The cervical incompetence is one of them or insufficiency. Congenital malformation of the uterus, that we will actually look at it later. Uterine fibroids, when you have a, especially a submucosal uterine fibroids, you're more likely going to lose pregnancy. And, and intrauterine adhesions, that will actually limit uh, the, 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 the expand of the uterine volume. So you, you're more likely to have issues with your pregnancy when you have that. Uh, importantly, we need to note that infection, infection, infection account only for 5%. And in many clinical settings, people when they have uh, uh, a miscarriage, they are more likely going to look for what is causing that and they are interested in looking at infection, which is very unfortunate. Of course, it account only for 5%. Immunological disorders also account up to 15%. More than infection, we have the autoimmune diseases, especially the 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 the, the racious isoimmunization if it is there if you develop uh, um, racious isoimmunization you're more likely to have that um, and then other autoimmune conditions that can actually predispose to that um, we also have environmental factors cigarette smoking people who take a lot of alcohol uh, people who are taking contraceptive agents especially when they are pregnant they are also more likely uh, to lose the pregnancy. Uh, it should be noted that this contraceptive uh, agent is only when you're pregnant. When you take it when you're pregnant, you're more likely to cause, you're distorting the, the, the hormonal milieu within a, a, a woman's body. Maternal uh, medical illness like cyanotic heart disease and, and uh, hemoglobinopathies are more likely to also have this. Also, we need to know that uh, up to 15, up to 20 percent of uh, the pregnancy losses have no demonstrable causes. So the causes are actually unknown. Let's look at the specific uh, uh, types of abortion. We have threatened abortion. In this, uh, uh, started, but not uh, has not progressed to a state in which it re recovery is impossible. So you just having someone having a situation when they're about to lose their pregnancy, but they have not yet uh, uh, lost the pregnancy. Uh, so that is also something that you, you, you need to, 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 to know. It, it, it is present and um, yes. So in this case, you can be able to manage this patient and then maybe the miscarriage, the abortion um, thing will actually regress it may actually uh, regress. Uh, the other clinical features I shared with this is that the patient have a, a normal history of amenorrhea. Of course, amenorrhea is a constant. Then they have a slight PV bleeding and a slight pain. This pain and PV bleeding uh, should be slight. Um, but in most cases, the 
PV bleeding is actually painless. So initially they will be painless, but maybe it will progress to a mild back pain that is dull uh, and also lower abdominal pain. Uh, in this case, when you do a digital examination, you find that the cervix uh, feels soft and, and it is closed. Um, the external also of the cervix is closed. And if you do uh, an ultrasound scan, uh, it, it may actually reveal that the, 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 the sacs is actually within a normal range. But of course, there may be some bleeding that is seen behind the placenta. So that could be a, a, a threatened abortion. Of course, if in a threatened abortion, you need to have differential diagnosis that are there. The differential diagnosis may be cervical ectopy, may be uh, maybe uh, polyps, or carcinoma, ectopic pregnancy, molar pregnancy. These are things that you consider when you think a woman is pregnant and they're bleeding, and you want to be sure that uh, they don't have any other condition. Mm. Um, the management of uh, threatened abortion is best, uh, of course, the patient should have bed rest. Uh, um, up to 80% of this pregnancy may actually be able to uh, continue until term. Of course, the relief of pain, you may actually be able to, and then maybe because of anxiety, you may need to calm them down by giving a uh, diazepam, but that's not quite necessary. Uh, um, on, of course, the other thing is that if the pregnancy, if you see already a live birth, a live fetus, I mean, not a live birth, a live fetus, you, the, the chance of carrying it on is, is 95 percent and which is actually pretty good um, let's look at inevitable abortion in this case um, changes have progressed so much that uh, uh, pregnancy is not is not is, it is not possible for the pregnancy to continue that means that you may not avoid this kind of pregnancy loss anymore uh, or in, in clinically, this patient have uh, features of threatened of miscarriage, which w initially was present with increasing vaginal bleeding and aggravation of pain. So the pain become more and more. That means that the uterus start contracting to expel the product of conception. Um, uh, sometimes these features may not develop typically with threatened abortion. It will progress so fast that it is hard to even... Uh, uh, help out. Uh, if you do an internal examination, a, 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 a vaginal examination reveals that the cervix is already dilated with the product already in the cervical os. So when you have that, if you see this picture, it shows a threatened abortion. That means that the implantation site is really detached. There's complete detachment. Whether you do what, you may not be able to re-implant this. So that means the only thing is you, you, you help the mother to avoid bleeding. Um, the management is uh, aimed at uh, accelerating the process of expansion. That means that you don't need to expect uh, much apart from completing the process. Uh, and also maintain strict uh, asepsis so that the mother does not get a uh, pregnancy. Um, it's important that uh, you need to take this seriously. Uh, sometimes uh, you would want nature to take its course, but it might be uh, uh, predisposing a mother to something else. Um, if a mother is, uh, if the pregnancy is, if the pregnancy is below 12 weeks, you may consider um, suction evacuation with uh, MVA. But if it is 12 weeks and more, maybe you consider a forceful evacuation or oxytocin infusion. Oxytocin is less likely going to work because the receptors are not yet present at these times. Um, of course, IV fluid, you may need to consider that. If the bleeding is much, you may need to consider blood transfusion, uh, among others. Uh, antibiotics, you may need to consider. Incomplete abortion. The process has already taken place, but the product has not completely uh, been expelled. Um, and, and part of it is left inside. It could be the placenta, it could be the membranes, it could even be the fetal part still being left inside. And that's what we call incomplete abortion. Uh, in incomplete abortion, typically it presents uh, with uh, issue of fresh, uh, flesh, fleshy mass per vagina. So that these women will tell you that yes, 
they have lost some product of conception. Uh, the pain may continue and then the bleeding may actually continue. If you do an e e examination, it reveals that uh, uh, a uterus is smaller than the period of amenorrhea. If the woman is probably about 14, 15 weeks of amenorrhea, and then when you do a vaginal examination, you find that it has actually reduced. It's less than that. Um, the internal os of the cervix may still be open because the product is still uh, within the uterine cavity. And there may be still bleeding that you'll be able to see uh, coming through. Uh, uh, on examination, uh, uh, the, you may actually find that if you were able to recollect the product of conception that has been expelled, you'll actually find that uh, uh, it is incomplete. Mm. Um, the problem with this is that uh, um, the retained product may cause bleeding sepsis or of placental poly polyps. So it's uh, important that we, we remove it. We actually do evacuation. And that's how it appears on the picture. And uh, the management, of course, is uh, evacuation. Uh, early uh, abortion, dilatation, and evacuation under anesthesia is very important. Sometimes, with the time, the cervix will get closed. So you may need to still uh, dilate and then evacuate. Um, uh, for late uh, abortion, that's more than 12 weeks, uh, you may need to do it under general anesthesia and then use ovum forceps and other blunt curates to actually get this product of conception out. Um, <coughs> so uh, you may need to consider giving prophylactic antibiotics, you need to consider medical management with misoprostol and, and then uh, these are things that you need to, to do. Uh, when the product conceptions are completely expelled from the uterus, it is called um, uh, a complete abortion. So a complete abortion is when everything has already gotten out. Uh, then, then that is it. And, and then the, the picture is that uh, there is subsidence in the abdominal pain. As soon as uh, she expel everything, the, the pain will reduce and even the bleeding will actually reduce. The size of the uterus may actually reduce. The cervix will be closing up and then the bleeding is is actually very minimal. It's just almost menstrual-like. If you do an ultrasound scan, you find that the endometrium is already empty. Uh, a missed abortion is, in, is when the, the fetus is dead and retained passively inside the uterus for a varied amount of, of time. Uh, when uh, it is diagnosed normally when the fetus with a crown round length of five millimeter without a fetal heart. So uh, sometimes this, uh, when it is too early, we call them um, we call them uh, a blighted ovum. But uh, a missed abortion is when the fetus died inside, but is still retained. And mm. the clinical features of missed abortion are very uh, key, very 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 uh, clear here. You realize that uh, the signs of pregnancy will start disappearing. If a woman was vomiting, this vomiting will start disappearing. If they have tender breasts, it will start disappearing. If they have breast engorgement, it will start going down. Uh, the uterine size becomes also smaller and smaller. And then uh, the cervix feel firm with close internal os. So when you do an uh, internal examination, you'll be able to uh, have that. If you look at the fetal heart, you will not be able to see that. And with the time, if it takes long, really, really long, the, the immunolo immunological test for pregnancy may actually be negative. So in case of pregnancy, it may not be seen. Um, if you retain this product for conception, uh, it might uh, lead to complication of abscesses or a disseminated intravascular coagulation. A rare uh, thing is that, uh, uh, it, though it is very rare, but it can occur for babies above, for, for fetus above 20, above 20, um, about above 16 weeks of gestation. Of course, the, the, the management here is that you need to evacuate. If it is less than 12 weeks, you need to consider. There are changes that are done, and I think this you'll actually see it from the world, what, has, what is being done on, 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 on missed abortion when they come. A septic abortion is when the, 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 the infection has actually entered into and, and infected the, the product of conception within the uterine cavity. Um, um, this is 
something which is gross and, uh, and it can lead to a lot of complication. And if anything, uh, it should be avoided. Most of them come because of uh, retained product of conception and, 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 and uh, maybe because of also a missed abortion. So if a missed abortion is detected earlier, it should be uh, uh, worked on earlier. If um, a retained product of conception is there, uh, a mother can, came, uh, came in with a retained uh, product of conception, it should be uh, cleared. Uh, the clinical features, uh, of course, your mother's present with vomiting, diarrhea, and then the pulse rate will also re increase, and then because of sepsis, uh, if you do an abdominal examination, realize that there will be abdominal tenderness and then guarding and rigidity. Internal examination reveals offensive purulent vaginal discharge, and then a uterus uh, usually will uh, be uh, Pantulas or uh, boggy, so that means that they are not contracted. Um, the cervical os will normally be open. In this case, uh, septic abortion, if you must do investigation, these are the key things that you need to do. A complete blood count would help you to see maybe if there's increased leukocytes and then the different leukocytes that are increasing. And then uh, you may need to look at the serum, urea, creatinine, and electrolytes. A septic abortion may actually cause septic uh, shock and then may actually cause a pre-renal renal failure. And that may uh, affect the amount of creatinine, urea, and then probably even electrolytes will be affected. You may need to do a high vaginal swab to see what kind of organisms are actually involved in this kind of infection. A blood culture would actually uh, help you to rule out septicemia. A transvaginal scan, a pelvic scan to detect retained product of conception is very important. Um, if maybe you suspect a boil injury due to um, the, 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 the perforation related to, to abortion treatment, you may need to do an abdominal uh, x-ray. A complication associated especially with the with abortions can be immediate complication that may be because in terms of hemorrhage, injury, maybe to the uterus adjacent structures, uh, maybe in spread of infection that leads to generalized peritonitis, endotoxic uh, shock uh, syndrome, uh, and especially when you get infection due to E. coli. You may also get uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation. Acute renal failure, we already talked about it, and thrombophlebitis. That means that you have a thrombus form in the, on the veins. All this leads to increased maternal death. So uh, you may need to know that abortion is one of the major causes of maternal uh, death in Uganda. Uh, management of septic abortion, of course, you consider uh, mild uh, cases, you may need to consider antibiotics, and in severe cases, you may need to admit this patient and then manage them, them uh, symptomatically as much as possible, as well as you're trying to do evacuation. You need to do this evacuation as soon as possible, but uh, you do it after initiating a mother on antibiotics already. Um, that's basically about abortion, um, but let's also look at recurrent abortion, which account for up to 1% of all women. All women, 1% of all women actually have recurrent pregnancy loss. That means that uh, um, 1 in 100 of them would actually have a problem with current pregnancy and may actually have losses of pregnancy as defined by as re recurrent pregnancy loss. The risk increases with each successive abortion. So the more abortion you have, the more likely you're going to have a recurrent pregnancy loss. Um, in some cases, up to 50% of uh, these mothers present with no demonstrable cause. Mm. So uh, first trimester's pregnancy loss. Recurrent pregnancy loss. Uh, it may be because of the gene. It may be because of translocation of the chromosomes. Uh, it may be because of 
other factors that affect the chromosomes. Mm -hmm. It may also be because of endocrine or metabolic uh, disorders. Uh, like in a patient who has poorly controlled diabetes, they are more likely to have recurrent pregnancy loss. Thyroid uh, problems, we already said luteal phase defects is one of them. Uh, and then uh, this uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, here abbreviated as uh, PCOS, is also very key in causing the current pregnancy loss. Uh, infection, although a rare thing, may actually cause recurrent pregnancy loss, especially syphilis. Um, and then if you have a genital infection that can be, uh, can go through the placenta and infect the baby, you're more likely to have that. Uh, in mothers who have inherited thrombophilia, that means that they have bleeding tendencies, especially when they have uh, a, a protein C deficiency, protein S deficiency, and protein 5 uh, laden mutation, or a prothrombin gene mutation, they are more likely to have problems with um, uh, recurrent pregnancy loss. You may need to understand this well, and then you go to the uh, coagulation uh, pathways. If you go to the coagulation pathway, you understand where these proteins uh, C and S are, and then uh, the factor V Leiden, and then the, the prothrombin. This will give you a guide. But uh, in summary, is that uh, if these mothers have bleeding tendencies, you know, as the 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 the, the, the fetus is implanting itself, it may create some um, erosion on the maternal surface and this may cause bleeding and if you have bleeding tendencies the bleeding may actually continue until uh, the, 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 the sac is displaced and that may result into abortion. Immunological uh, causes may be because of autoimmunity. We must understand that uh, pregnancy, uh, pre I mean the, the, the fetus inside is foreign. So if a mother has already autoimmunity, they are more likely to reject even a foreign uh, particle, a foreign gene inside them. If they're already fighting their own gene, so that means they even fight the, the foreign gene better. So this may actually result into uh, pregnancy losses. Of course, you have conditions that have um, classified as autoimmune disorders, uh, like the antiphospholipid syndrome, uh, and then uh, systemic lipase erythematosus uh, may also cause that. Um, if the pregnancy loss is within the second trimester, uh, it may be because of anatomical, it may be because of uh, maybe uh, acquired defects. It may be congenital defects or acquired defects. Uh, the acquired defects may be because of adhesion that is created within the uterine cavity, uh, especially Asaman syndrome. Uh, and then uh, you have uterine fibroids and endometriosis that may also affect this and distort the, the architecture of the, the, the uterus and then the, the cervix and survival incompetence. The congenital will actually look at them later. The uterine causes um, of account for up to 12% of uh, recurrent pregnancy loss, maybe because of Mullerian uh, fusion uh, defects. You would need to review a Mullerian um, uh, duct, how it is it develops into the cervix, the upper side of the vagina, the, the cervix, and then the uterus, and then the uterine tubes. So there may be anomalies in their, in their presentation, and that may cause a problem. Um, it may also be because of implantation onto the septum. If you have a septic uterus, if you implant uh, onto the septum, it has a poor blood supply, and then that pregnancy is more likely you're going to lose it. Um, this picture shows you um, uterine anomalies. You see that this is a septic uterus. There's a septum that is formed between it, and then we have a double uterus. That's actually what they call uterine diadelphis. Uterine diadelphis, you see that there are two of them. Um, you may also have a biconate uterus, that means it has two horns. Mm. 
And this one here is not only double uterus, but you see that there's also double vagina. The vaginal pouches are different. Uh, each of the uterus has its own vaginal pouch. Mm. Uh, cervical insufficiency or cervical incompetence um, normally occurs, uh, this pregnancy losses occurs uh, in the second trimester or even it can cause early, uh, uh, early, 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 early labor. So that means that you're more likely to have a preterm labor. Um, the, the cause of this can be because of congenital, when people have congenital development of the uterus, especially malarian issues, uh, they may actually uh, have a uterine, I mean, cervical incompetence. It could be acquired, and when you're taking history of a patient with um, uh, cervical incompetence, we would actually be interested in especially the acquired cause if, if they've ever had a DNC dilatation and curated operation. If they have induced abortion, maybe by dilatation and evacuation, it's very important that you need to understand that. Um, you may also need to have vaginal operative delivery through uh, undilated uh, cervix. So if they have uh, an operative delivery, maybe they did a vacuum, maybe they did a forceful delivery, very important that you need to put that. If they had an uh, amputation of the cervix, maybe because of corn biopsy or something else, it would be good to have that. And then multiple gestation prior preterm birth. Um, if you have multiple gestation, you're more likely to have a survival competence. And in, in some practice, uh, when a woman has twin or triplet, they actually put for them uh, a circlet as a prophylactic uh, ways of preventing pregnancy loss. Um, the history is that uh, these women present with mid trimester painless cervical dilatation and the escape of lyqua amni. So normally they start draining water and then the water, you realize that they, 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 by the time they start draining water, probably the cervix is already dilated to more than four centimeters. If you do an external examination, uh, especially if you do a uh, Ega dilators. If you pass a ega dilators when the woman before the woman is pregnant, it can actually allow up to size eight of ega dilator beyond the internal os, and that means that probably. And if you do hysterosalpingography, you see that there is funneling of the of the internal os during pregnancy. Of course, there may be certain things. The cervix may be short more than less than two. 0.5 centimeters, and there may be funneling of the cervix, and, and then the internal os may be only less than one centimeters. So you may need to use to rely this if a woman is already pregnant. Uh, management of this is, of course, you need to put a sacrilege. You need to put a sacrilege, either Srodica or, or McDonald. You would understand this uh, sacrilege as you go to the wards, and this is how it present. Mm -hmm. Normal competent cervix should be long enough. And then it should actually have a T shape. You see this one forming a T. And then uh, it's in the survival component, you see that this one here is forming like a U now. Uh, so that means the, the cervix is already opening. Mm. Um, this is how you're able to restore the survival components. Um, and these are the contraindications of survival competence incision. Uh, and then you also need to uh, uh, look at the type of circlage that you, you, you give uh, uh, and then um, these are the type of circlage that you do not very important for you now but it will be good for you to understand them um, that is the Shrodica uh, you have to actually dissect in Shrodica you have to dissect there the the, 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 the the cervix and bury the the, 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 the sutures below uh, the, the cervical mucosa or the cervical skin um, in cases where mothers have failed and, and, and especially if they have failed cervical sacrilege twice you may actually need to consider a transabdominal sacrilege 
uh, it's a difficult operation, it's very invasive, you may only reserve it for mothers who have failed. Or when the service is so short that you cannot even put a, a satellite. Um, a post-operative care, this is what you need to do in the post-operative care and when you should remove the stitch is well illustrated here. Uh, you need to remember that. Uh, the complication that I shared with the, with the stitch are here. You need to see that. Uh, prognosis, recurrent pregnancy loss. Uh, um, of course, uh, this is how it can, how the progno prognosis, uh, the risk of recurrent pregnancy is about 25-30% irrespective of the number of previous spontaneous miscarriage. The overall prognosis is good even without therapy. Sometimes actually mother can have uh, a miscarriage and then, um, uh, and then you may actually have a success of more than 80%. And, and basically, that's what I wanted to discuss about cervical, uh, I mean, about cervical confidence and also about abortion. So I encourage you to read, and I expect that uh, um, I'll get more questions when I come to the ward.